and welcome to Fayette County Public Library so Story Time. Our first story today is Chickarella. We've picked out a lot of fairy tales to go with our summer reading theme this year. Imagine your story is the theme of our summer reading. Here's Chickarella. She's quite a chick. <laughs> Chickarella had a wonderful chickhood until one night when a fox got into the coop and carried off her mother. Chickarella's father, now a single rooster, did his best to raise her, providing her with a happy and stable coop life. Then, a few years later, a hen from another farm showed up with her two daughters and convinced Chickarella's father to marry her. Chickarella was excited to have a new family. She even put her sewing skills to use, making three dresses as welcome gifts for her stepmother and new stepsisters. Ovenvalda and Cholestera, such a sweet girl, said the stepmother with a smile that gave Chickarella hen bumps. Before long, the stepmother sent Chickarella's father off on a wild goose chase. Then she proceeded to redecorate. This doesn't look like home anymore, Chickarella said. That's because it's my coop now, not yours, said the stepmother. You have too many clothes. I want you to let out your dresses to fit my daughters. But what will I wear, asked Chickarella. You're just a servant now. You only need one dress, and you won't be living in the main coop anymore. From then on, the stepmother locked Chickarella in the spring house every night. Chickarella's days were filled with work. She prepared all the meals, but wasn't allowed to eat with her stepfamily. She ate the bugs that clung to the spring house walls and drank the clister crystal clear water that bubbled up through its floor. After a short time on this old, odd diet, Chickarella noticed that the shells of her eggs were becoming more and more transparent until soon she was laying eggs of pure glass. There's, I think her eggs are pretty. One day, the stepsisters came home all a flutter. The prince is seeking a new bride, said Ovamelda. He's invited every unmarried hen to the fowl ball, added Cholestera. I've always wanted to go to a ball, said Chickarella. Don't be silly, said the stepmother. The prince would never marry a servant. Who wants to get married, Chickarella asked. I just want to see all the fancy ball gowns. Out of the question, answered her stepmother. Now start making my daughters look beautiful. We don't have much time. Chickarella's next few days were filled with frantic preparations. Making the stepsisters presentable wasn't easy, especially when they kept adding their own exasperating touches to their outfits. When the big night arrived, the stepmother locked Chickarella in the spring house. Later, as Chickarella was dozing off, the spring house fizzed with sparkles. Yikes! Who are you? gasped Chickarella. What? You've never read a fairy tale? I'm your fairy godmother. I've been watching your stepmother run you ragged. Why don't you speak up? My father will fix everything when he gets back. Don't wait for someone else to fix things, dearie. You take charge. Fantastic eggs, though. How do you do that? I think it's something in the water. Oh, yeah. I put a spell on this spring a while back. Cool side effect. There's her eggs down there. Fairy Goose Mother, I'd love to go to the fowl ball. So go already. 
although why you want to is beyond me. The band is Penny Pole and the Rock Island Reds. They sound like chicken toenails on broken eggshells. But I have nothing to wear. If I had some silk and a few beads, I'd make a gown. I'll speed things up. The fairy goose mother waved her wand. Sky blue pink is my favorite color, cried Chickarella. It's beautiful. Yeah, I'm good. Could have made a fortune as a fashion designer. Now I remember the story, Chickarella exclaimed. You'll turn a pumpkin into a coach. I don't do transportation, dearie. I'll call a cab. But at midnight, the cabbie goes off duty and the snazzy outfit goes poof. <laughs> Chickarella was thrilled to see all the gowns at the foul ball. Well, those are interesting, aren't they? Look at all those fancy gowns they made up. <laughs> the prince was charmed by the exquisite stranger and danced every dance with her, even though they couldn't carry on a conversation over Penny Poulet and the Rock Island Reds' music. There they are dancing. When the band finally took a break, Chickarella heard the clock strike midnight. I must go, she cried. As she dashed out the door, she felt an egg coming on. I can't stop to lay an egg. But there's no holding back an egg that's on its way, especially a slippery glass one. Chickarella ran headlong down the castle steps. She was too late. The cab drove away. Then the gown disappeared in a burst of fireworks, and Chickarella ran cluck naked all the way home. How silly. <laughs> Look, my, oops, excuse me. The next day, Chickarella heard a commotion. Hear ye, hear ye. The prince seeks the mysterious hen he met at the foul ball. The only clue she left is this egg. All single hens, please present your eggs. Look, mine has big yolks, said Cholestera. She is a big yolk, said old Vimelda. The egg must match the one in this velvet bag, said the prince. Does anyone else live here? The stepmother blocked the prince's view. No, your highness. The I live here, said Cinderella, or Chickarella, but the prince didn't hear her. He and the page turned to leave. Wait, I lay glass eggs. Is that what you're looking for? <clears throat> That's exactly what I'm looking for. Release her at once. Your Highness surely wouldn't marry my servant, Chickarella. Finding a bride was my mother's idea, said the prince. I only went to the ball to see the fancy gowns. Oh, me too, exclaimed Chickarella, running out into the sunlight. Your costume was excellent, my dear. Thanks, your highness. I'm really into fashion. There was a burst of sparkles. Fashion? Did I hear fashion? There's her fairy goose mother again. I'm into accessories, said the prince, especially shoes. We all love clothes, said Chickarella. Let's start our own fashion business. Done, declared the prince. We'll name it after you. So the fairy goose mother zapped up some fabulous fabrics. Chickarella cut and stitched, and the prince designed stylish shoes to match. That's how they started the fashion line called Chickarella. Their first show in New York was an extravaganza. And those are all the fancy gowns they made. And look at the fancy shoes the prince made. I think these are my favorite. They're kind of funny looking. <laughs> and together, the three friends worked happily ever after. 
Isn't that just the way a fairy tale ends? They worked happily ever after. Okay, Miss Lisa, what do you have for us? All right, today we have another fairy tale, and this one is called Red Riding Hood and the Sweet Little Wolf. That is the big bad wolf. So let's see what happens with a sweet wolf in the story. All right, here we go. Once upon a time, there was a big bad wolf who lived in the woods. Well, that's really not quite true. Uh, she was a sweet little wolf who loved all things pretty and pink, especially fairy tales. She lived with her mom and her dad who were very big and very bad. Mr. and Mrs. Wolf shook their heads. When will you ever learn to be a real wolf like us? It is time you went out to get the dinner. So the sweet little wolf set out. She hid behind a tree. I must be clever and cunning, she whispered over and over again as she looked at her mother's list. Dinner. One onion. Two large potatoes. Three carrots. One sprig of rosemary. And one little girl who is tender and juicy. Just then, R Riding Hood skipped by on her way to Grandma's house in the woods. The sweet little wolf couldn't believe her luck. She scampered slyly and followed her along the path. Red Riding Hood was reading a story out loud. Once upon a time, with a flick of a wand, a girl's rags turned into a beautiful gown fit for a ball. It was a fairy tale. Sweet Little Wolf pricked up her ears and listened. Outside Grandma's cottage, Red Riding Hood finished the story, and they lived happily ever after. And then she went inside. Sweet Little Wolf felt in her pocket for a handkerchief. Happy endings always made her cry. She pulled out her mother's list. Oh no, what had she been doing? She couldn't go home without dinner. There was only one thing she could do. Grandma was out, and so Sweet Little Wolf crept into the cottage after Little Red Riding Hood. She tried her hardest to make a scary face. Look at her, she's growling at herself in the, in the mirror. She pointed her sharp claws. She practiced her best growl in Grandma's bedroom mirror. Her family would be so proud of her. But then she spotted a lovely pink robe and a frilly nightcap. On the back of the bedroom door, Sweet Little Wolf couldn't resist trying them on. Suddenly, she heard Red Riding Hood in the little room next door. Look at her, put all that makeup on, <laughs> and perfume, <clears throat> got shoes and necklaces. She's going to get herself to be a little fancy wolf. The girl was reading again. Once upon a time, a girl was rescued from a tower in the middle of the forest by a handsome prince. Sweet little wolf lay down in Grandma's soft, cozy bed. She would just listen to one more story. And then she would be a real wolf. Soon, Riding Hood heard the strange noise coming from Grandma's bedroom. Snuffle, grout. Snort, snuffle, grunt, snort. She was surprised. Grandma was supposed to be picking up bluebells in the woods. So why was she snoring in her bed? She looked closer. Oh, Grandma, what big eyes you have. And what big teeth you have. Red Riding Hood pulled back the covers and screamed, Ah! Bad wolf! Help! She 
shouted, Wolf! <laughs> She's pulling the covers off, too, isn't she? A woodcutter heard Red Riding Hood's cry and ran toward the cottage as fast as she could. But sweet little wolf didn't leap out of the bed and chase Red Riding Hood. She hid under the covers and sobbed great big tears. I don't want to be a big bad wolf, she cried. I just want to listen to fairy tales. Red Riding Hood felt sorry for Sweet Little Wolf. She told the woodcutter that she was perfectly safe and wrote a letter in her very best handwriting. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Wolf, Once upon a time, there lived a little wolf that didn't want to eat girls. She loved all things pretty and pink and dreamed of being a good and kind wolf. So this story has a different ending, a happy ending. Best wishes, Red Riding Hood. Sweet Little Wolf ran home with Red Riding Hood's letter. Mr. and Mrs. Wolf were delighted to have their little wolf back. They had been worried, particularly when they had heard about the woodcutter from their forest friends. It doesn't matter that you aren't a big bad wolf. We love you just the way you are, said Mrs. Wolf, tucking her into bed. Later, little wolf fell fast asleep, dreaming of princesses and magical lands and lovely little girls. Well, she was a wolf after all. <laughs> so that is our story about Red Riding Hood and the sweet little wolf. Now, boys and girls, today I have an activity for us that has to do with Red Riding Hood. Now, I am going to put this up here on the board, and you can hopefully see it. This is a Sudoku board. Now, Sudoku is a type of puzzle, boys and girls, where you have to have the one of each design or number, if you play them in the crossword puzzle page of the newspaper, um, going across and going down. So you can see on this Sudoku board, we have all of the figures that go with Little Red Riding Hood. We have Grandma, which she really wasn't in our story at all. Um, we have the Big Bad Wolf, and we have a basket, and we have the red cape. So in order to play this game, we have to be able to have grandma, the wolf, the basket, and the cape going across each of the rows and going down each of the columns. Now I have a whole handful of little pieces here and I am going to attempt to place these in the right place. I want you to watch me see if I'm doing it right. Okay, so I have a cape. So I know I can't put the cape in this row, and I can't put the cape in that column because the cape is already there. So to put it here would be wrong. So why don't we just slide it over, and we'll stick it here so that there is a cape in this row. So we're missing two more capes, aren't we? Maybe we should put all the capes on first. That might work. Let's see. Let's get another cape. All right, so we know it can't go here, and it can't go here. Maybe, maybe we can just put it here. How's that? All right, so it looks like we're missing one cape, and it probably needs to go here. It's actually on the floor. Maybe Miss Kim can pick that up for me. <laughs> it <laughs> fell when I picked up the pieces. All right, so if we thank you. So if we put our cape here... <coughs> We will have one cape in each row and one cape in each column. Now, it actually gets a little bit easier, boys and girls, as you fill in the pieces. Let's see. There are three wolves on there, so we only need one wolf. Can somebody guess where the wolf needs to go? So we have a wolf in this column and in this column and in this column. So we need one here. If we put it in this spot, is that right, boys and girls? Hmm. Do you see the mistake? There's two wolves, so it can't go there. Let's move it on down to here. 
I think that works, right? Because now the wolf is in this column and there's one in that column. All right, shall we do grandma or the basket next? All right, I think I heard grandma. That's what I'm gonna do next. All right, so we have a grandma in this column and in this column. So we're missing the first ones. Now this is easy, right? Because we have the cape, the wolf, the basket, and we need grandma. And so that also fits here too. There's one of each in that row and in that column. So it looks like we need one more grandma. Let's see, if we put her here, does that one work? It helps go across here. Uh-oh, we can't do that here. I think Miss Lisa's done something wrong. Oh my, what have I done wrong? Maybe this has to go here. This has to go here mm. for the grandma to go <coughs> here. So sometimes, if you're especially if you're doing the paper and pencil one, make sure you're using a pencil, not a pen, because you're going to need to erase sometimes. I had made that mistake. It fit, but not when you get the other pieces in. So our basket is left. And says, see if we got it right. Cape, wolf, grandma, basket. Basket, wolf, grandma, cape, that works there. And in this spot, we have grandma, basket, cape, and wolf. I think we have it, boys and girls, what do you think? Sudoku can be a really fun game. And actually, if you look up the history of Sudoku, some guy from Connersville, back in, I think it was 1979, designed this type of Sudoku that we still play today. Um, so pretty interesting that this actually was designed and invented from somebody here from Connersville. Um, you, you can make this at home too if you want to play. Just um, make up the little pieces and see if you can put them all in different rows and different columns and finish up the puzzle. Hope you had fun with this today. All right, Miss Kim's got one more story for us today. Well, you know the story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. <clears throat> this one's different. This is Goldilocks and just one bear. <clears throat> Once upon a time, there was this bear. One minute, he was strolling in the woods, all happy-go-lucky. The next minute, he didn't have a crumb of a clue where he was. He was one completely lost bear. Now look at all these signs. Wrong way, this way, this way, actually this way, <laughs> question mark. I think that's kind of what the bear's thoughts are in this story. The bear didn't much like this place. Too many right lights and not enough twigs. Too much loud honking and beeping and not nearly enough owl hooting. The bear was also a teeny bit scared and his furry legs were slightly wobbly. Maybe the thing to do, said the bear, looking around, is to pop into snooty towers, and get away from this terrible racket. But the revolving door at snooty towers made the bear dizzy, and being dizzy with wobbly legs was bad news. I think that would be bad news. What the bear needed was the little rest. A little rest somewhere would definitely make things right. The bear peeked through a door and thought how very pleasant it was up here. Not nasty and noisy like down there, said the bear. Just the place for a little rest. All that whooshy traveling was certainly a hungry business. So before his little rest, a little porridge seemed like a good idea. Porridge is too soggy. Does that look like porridge to you? This porridge is too crunchy. Doesn't look like porridge to me. This porridge is a bit on the dry side, but it's better than nothing. Now the bear was ready for a little rest.
this chair is a little ouchy. <laughs> this chair is too noisy. And this chair is just right. <laughs> a little rest is nice. But what the bear needed to really feel like himself was a good old-fashioned nap in a comfy bed. This bed is too frothy. <laughs> and this bed is too pink. This bed is just right. And soon he nodded off. Looks like he's getting a good nap now. The bear dreamed of crunching through leaves. The bear dreamed of puttering around in his slippers. A voice shouting. The bear dreamed of a voice shouting very, very loudly. <laughs> Somebody has been eating from my fishbowl, said the daddy person. Somebody has been eating my dear little pumpkin's kitty nibbles, said the mommy person. And somebody has been eating my toast, said the little person, and they've eaten it all up. Look at the bear's eyes. He hears those loud voices. Unfortunately, the bear was not dreaming at all. He was wide awake and back in real life again. I think it's funny that the bear has a teddy bear. <laughs> Somebody has squished my cactus, said the daddy person. Somebody has upset my dear little pumpkin, said the mommy person. And somebody has popped my beanbag chair, said the little person. Somebody's been sleeping in my bath, said the daddy person. Somebody's been sleeping in my bed, said the mommy person. Shh, whispered the little person. I think that somebody is sleeping in my bed right now. The bear peeked from under the covers to see a daddy person, a mommy person, and a little person standing right there. Now, what do you think a bear would do? When Goldilocks saw the three bears, she jumped out of bed and ran. What do you think a bear would do when he wakes up and sees three people looking at him? Hmm, let's find out. The bear thought that the mommy person looked ever so slightly familiar. And the mommy person thought that gobbling other people's breakfast, breaking other people's stuff, and snoozing in other people's beds seemed ever so slightly familiar too. And it was. Baby bear, said the mommy person. Goldilocks, said the bear. <laughs> they hadn't seen each other in ages. Porridge, asked Goldilocks. The bear nodded. So Goldilocks cooked up a big bowl and plucked it in front of him. It was not too hot. It was not too cold. It was just right. It made the bear almost forget about that once upon a time when Goldilocks had behaved so badly. This little bear would never dream of doing anything like that. And although it had been good to see Goldilocks living so happily ever after with those charming people, the bear decided it was time to go back home to the woods. Kind of cute. I like that little story. It's one of my favorites. Goldilocks and just one bear. Well, that's all we have time for today. We hope you had fun. We did. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.